What's going on guys? Well, watch us back again with an only for you guys. I hope you're all having a lovely day slash evening, especially after 2-0 depressing loss against Liverpool. I really hope you guys are doing well right now, honestly. Um, as always, I'm going to give you guys the latest Chelsea news, news in, news out. There's a lot to be speaking about. Kepa, of course, needs to be dropped by Chelsea. Many expect to come in, but I really want to speak about why we need to support Kepa during this difficult time. And Declan Rice, most likely the player that we need so much at Chelsea right now. So guys, if you enjoy my content, smash that like button. Let's get at least 500 likes. More likes, the more this channel can grow, basically. That's why I ask you guys to help me. And this is why I always provide more content as much as possible and doing live streams with you guys. Subscribe if you're new here, hit the notification, tune in daily, and comment down below your thoughts and opinions on each topic I speak. I also want to implement uh, something onto live streams that I do after every single game. The ones that donate on the live stream uh, can be invited to the actual live stream to give their opinions on camera as well. So that's something that I want to implement on this channel very soon, giving you guys more say on this channel because this is our channel okay worldwide channel for the fans worldwide okay we're all one and i support all you guys or just like the way you guys support me so thank you for all the support but that's something that i'll be implementing and giving you guys information soon so i want to talk about my friend super frank error from twitter he put out a tweet i honestly feel bad for kepper it's not his fault his price tag was his release clause a few months before joining Chelsea, his price tag was 15 million euros. I wish him all the best, but he's not Chelsea quality. We also had a sensible United fan, a rival fan, that actually had sense in his head, yeah. I know Kepa is a dark place right now. I'm genuinely worried for his mental health. Being a goalkeeper is really lonely when you concede. You're just there by yourself, complimenting the error or goal you just conceded. And that is, you know, fantastic words that he's actually said. Obviously, he said it in a bit of a slang in UK but I put it into professional terms with you guys so you guys understand but what he's trying to say is yes Kepa isn't good enough for Chelsea yes he shouldn't be playing for Chelsea but we need to understand he is a Chelsea player he is, hu he is a human being we need to be supporting this goalkeeper we shouldn't be sending him abuse we shouldn't be mocking him on social media we shouldn't be spamming his comments none of that honestly we're better than that okay we know he's not good enough for Chelsea he will be dropped Mendy's going to be coming in straight in for him straight away okay Chelsea Basically, he just haven't announced the sign and everyone else has confirmed it. Renders have even confirmed it that they know this player is leaving. It's just up to Chelsea to announce it as well. Even Sky Sports during the game were talking about it. Fabrizio Romano put out a tweet during the game when Kepa made a mistake. Um, Mendy to Chelsea 100% done and also signed. The announcement will be on next week, which is this week basically. Monday to Friday, of course, because uh, Sunday was the previous week. So we're expecting the signing to be done in the next 24 or 48 hours. I'll be very surprised if it's even later. We need to register him before the Carabao Cup deadline, which I think is 12 p.m. tomorrow. So yeah, it should be done very soon. I know you guys are bored of this news and stuff, but I really wanted to get out there about Kepo because Chelsea fans, we've had a lot of bad signings in the past, okay? And I've tried to support as many as possible. And there's just limits now. Um, Maybe Kepa can be a second choice goalkeeper. Maybe he can play a few cup games and try and get that confidence. But I think he should go out on loan and get that confidence boost that he needs in his you know, body, of course, and make sure he's fine playing football again, being a goalkeeper and enjoying what he does in general, whether it's at Chelsea or not. I just want him to do well. So just like Bakayoko, he wasn't good enough for Chelsea, but he went out on loan and done really well. And he's got that confidence back in his stride. And hopefully he can push on from there. So I just want to see guys that play for Chelsea do really well in general, whether it's at Chelsea or not. So um, that is the main one I want to be speaking about. The second one is Kante and Declan Rice. Now, Athletic have come out and said Lampard sees a defensive midfield as a missing piece of the jigsaw. Should Chelsea use the market one more time? Well documented, the player Lampard has above all is Declan Rice. Chelsea discussing other options. An insider says to the Athletic, Kante is not holding is not a holding midfielder. He's not that number six that Frank Lampard wants. Okay, he wants to be uh, leaving the area, wants to go win the ball back. I believe Lampard wants a holder just to sit there like a Mikel to break things up and be more of a physical presence. So of course, we've been talking about Kante, where's gonna be fitting this team. I told you guys Lampard will try playing as a number six, but it's not his strongest point. He's not gonna be able to do that job where he just sits back. He's a player that can intercept that runs back, tracks back, presses up. Sarri kind of changed his game as well going forward, being able to attack the final third. We saw yesterday him go to two positions where he could have taken a shot, he didn't take it. No confidence there. I do not know why he didn't shoot. Whether it's on target, off target, put that pressure on. There was one way he should have laid it off to run on the right um, and he just took too long to pass it. 
So these kind of things, Kante's strongest point isn't there. He's trying, he's trying to adapt to that game, but his position is to be back in that pivot and being supported by someone next to him. Now, of course, if Declan Rice comes in, here's that person that can just sit there like a Matic. We saw on the Conte in his first season what Kante and Matic were doing in the first season. It was absolutely immense. Matic was some a beast, basically, and then he just went. Uh, I don't know if you remember that goal against Tottenham as well. I'm, not, I'm never going to forget that goal. Now is at United, unfortunately. It happens in football. Um, but yeah, those two were fantastic. And that's something that Declan Rice can come in and change that. I don't think the three of Georgino, Kovacic and Kante is good enough anymore for this system to be played under Frank Lampard. We saw we couldn't even break down Liverpool once. We tried long balls and Werner was making good runs. I think Werner was the only guy that was good yesterday. That I can say, okay, he done well. Some of the defenders done really well defensively, but of course when you go 2-0 down 10 men, it's a different story. Now, there's also Tarek Glamty, people asking, do we have a buyback clause? No, we do not. They, it wasn't inserted. He was sold for 3 million in January. We, we do have a sell-on clause, though, which is basically doesn't really help us. But against Chelsea, he played really, really well. He put Marcos Alonso on the stress, generally. It's a shame that he came out at the wrong time with Reese James. I felt like both of them could have had a good chance to be the future Chelsea right-backs. But Lamptey has different plans. He wanted to be playing straight away. And, and there's no hard feelings. Absolutely right by him. He is, you know, right to pick his choices in life where he wants to be. If he thinks he's ready for first team, he can go play first team. Maybe he can do really well at Brighton and then get a big move to a bigger club. And Chelsea might look back at it in regret. They tried to make him sign a new deal and send him out on loan. But he didn't want that. He wanted to be the first choice permanent and for the future. Now, Reece James exactly has his game and I feel like his crosses and stuff is a lot better, defensively is better but Lamptey is someone that can improve over time for sure I also want to say positives from yesterday's game okay, it's second game of the season, we need to calm down, we need to be patient, I need to be patient um, it's going to be a very long season, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon okay, it takes time defensive tactics a lot better, since we've got a new coach in everyone's been defending really really well and I've been more confident recently personally 5-6 players not starting yet due to injury. You know, we've got Hakim Ziyech, um, we've got Ben Chilwell, Thiago Silva, Pulisic. All these guys that haven't been playing, we're still missing these guys. Imagine Liverpool without Mane, uh, Salah. What, what would you say then if, if Liverpool fans were to lose there? You guys, you know, we have to be realistic. We have to be a bit more calm, a bit more patient. Of course, Lampard has spoken out and said objectives are a lot higher than last season, but it's a process. We need to be patient and I, and I support that. I told you guys, at least top three. I think we can challenge for the title once the team gels and we will probably see that around October, November where we play United and around those games basically. So I'm looking forward to it. I believe Chelsea can still bounce back from this. This is, there's still a lot to go. And also I want to talk about Tomori. Tomori back in the squad, fantastic. Rudiger wasn't in the squad. Most likely we have an offer for this defender. So, you know, we got our wishes basically off, off um, the pitch. Rudiger has been fantastic getting the signings of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner for Chelsea, of course. But on the pitch for me, hasn't been good enough. Lampard supports Christensen. Maybe it might change following that red card, but I felt like Christensen made that choice simply because he had no faith in Kepa in getting that ball. I felt like we should have just let Mane score that goal and then it could have been a different game of us coming back. Now, of course, Timo Werner has been hitting the ground running, winning two penalties, but hasn't scored yet, unfortunately, because teammates around him haven't been setting him up. I feel like he had many chances to be, you know, put in and he wasn't put in, basically. So, his time will come. Kai Havertz, we need to be a bit more patient. He's being played out of position. I still want him that number 10 role. I need to see him that middle, setting up Werner, Tammy or Giroud, basically, okay? Um, he was taken off, obviously, for tactical reasons, which I understand. I thought Mount should have been taken off. But then again, Mount's work rate defensively was the one that helped us uh, keep the, you know, deficit to just 2-0. Um, maybe we could have switched up with Giroud up top with Tammy and then take off Mount for these, you know, subs and then team are running behind, running in, trying to target man, trying to make something else happen. We've got a penalty, could have been a different story, could have put a lot of pressure towards the end, but unfortunately it just wasn't meant to be our day. Now, Thiago Silva is still a big statement, we need to be patient with the sign as well, coming in very soon. Um, and yeah, tomorrow coming in, vital tackles, which was fantastic and I hope he stays at Chelsea. Him and Thiago Silva could be first choice. Or Zuma, we shall see very soon. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
smash that like button subscribe if you're new here hit the notification tune in daily as you guys know 10 minute gang as always and also i might work tomorrow until 4 p.m i should be uploading around 5 30 6 p.m uk time if there's any news but watch us guys i'm out peace